think about when you were first behind the wheel learning to drive a car. You were probably extremely conscious about where your hands were on the steering wheel, how often you needed to check your mirrors, and how close you could get to the car in front of you. But over time, all of that began to feel more natural. Now you can fiddle with the radio and talk to a friend, and you automatically drive faster on the highway without having to think about it. That's because of the cerebellum, a butterfly-shaped structure at the base of the skull. What the cerebellum allows you to do is basically take all of that explicitly cognitively thought about information, fine tune it, and then make a prediction that when I'm getting into the car, I'm just going to do this motor program. For years, scientists believed that the cerebellum's main function was to coordinate movements. Well, if you look in textbooks and if you look at the history of neurology, people have always thought of the cerebellum as being involved in controlling smooth movement, maybe uh, processing sensory information. So if you're learning a dance step, or maybe adapting when you encounter a slippery surface uh, and want to keep yourself from falling. But increasing evidence has shown the cerebellum also plays an important role in cognition and social skills, tasks that can be difficult for autistic people. There's evidence that perhaps it, it regulates not only movement, but maybe cognition, emotion, a wide range of other functions. One of the earliest clues linking the cerebellum to autism came from studying post-mortem autism brains. These brains often show a loss of specialized brain cells known as Purkinje cells, which are responsible for carrying signals out of the cerebellum. Depending on the study you're looking at, you know, 50 to 90 percent of cases have Purkinje cell, um, a decrease in the Purkinje cell numbers that, you know, even up to greater than 50 percent reduction, right? So pretty significant changes. Scientists have been able to trigger social problems in mice by deleting genes associated with autism in Purkinje cells. And a lot of these models um, show significant, um, you know, uh, abnormalities in behavior that would be relevant for autism. Social impairments, repetitive behaviors, inflexible behaviors, these kinds of things. Kind of pointing at a critical role for the Purkinje cell in the regulation of these behaviors. In the 2000s, researchers learned that the regions of the cerebellum that are activated depend upon the task at hand. That helped researchers expand their understanding of the cerebellum's role to include prediction and correction of errors. Just as the cerebellum prevents people from tripping on an uneven sidewalk, it might also alert them when they sit too close to a conversation partner or help them laugh or sympathize at appropriate times. It does these things by ultimately allowing your, your brain in some way and your body to make a prediction. Researchers believe there may be an important critical period early on in development that links the cerebellum to social behavior. One study showed that inactivating the cerebellum early in a mouse's life, but not later on, leads to autism-like traits. People whose cerebellums are damaged from tumors or strokes may develop subtle social and emotional problems, but they do not become autistic. There's something about cerebellum that is very particular uh, to that part of the brain and also uh, has effects that are cumulative in the sense that they have big effects early in life and then those effects are not so large uh, later in life. Scientists are hoping further research on this crucial brain area might inspire a search for new autism treatments. Ideas range from electrical stimulation of the region to shaping cerebellar circuits through video games. If we could imagine the successes of deep brain stimulation in treating Parkinson's disease, imagine if there were some region where we could go in and say, do, 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 and tickle it, and then get some kind of outcome for behavior in the domain of autism. It would be amazing.